What's going on, guys? My name's Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Today, we're going to be talking about that minimum wage life, that hard life, right? If you want to like and subscribe after you watch this, please do. We appreciate you here. We're also still working our way toward the soundboard. So if you want to donate, there is uh, my cash app. If you want to help donate, we are working ourselves towards like a PC uh, soundboard to help with the sound and make everything more smooth. Appreciate you guys. All right, let's get back to the video. So let me introduce you to hard earned. So the first person we're going to be going over is Amelia. So let's get to it. She's, I'm just going to go over main points that I know what it feels like to live paycheck to paycheck. And so I want to just give my experience with this stuff. So my daughter worked here, sister worked here. My niece was up at the phone. She yeah. and Marissa. And you're the one that bought your father then. My dad liked it here because everybody speaks Italian. So it was home for him. This is for Danny's family, OK? You don't even consider this work. Fried pepperoni. I can be myself. I don't have to dress up. I don't have to watch my mouth. I tell them dirty jokes. She's helping herself. You know, most places I would lose my job. All right, be careful. Don't touch it, you guys. It's hot. Amelia Stancotti has worked at this family-owned place near her home for 24 years. Jobs here are so coveted that she can only get one shift a week. That's it. I'm done. I'm finished. Amelia's full-time job is at a downtown Chicago restaurant chain, a 45-minute commute from her home. Oh, God, I hate this. Oh. Let's do this. Let me start with this first part. Now... I understand. I'm going to turn this up for you guys. My apologies. Let me start with this. Okay, so first of all, she talks about working one time a week at this family restaurant. This restaurant has nothing to do with her full-time job. She says that she can be herself. She can talk. She can curse and all that kind of stuff. And if she did that somewhere else, she would get fired. I'm not saying that she does that because clearly as you go further into her these documentaries of these people, you know she's not that kind of person. I will say this, though. I have met a lot of people who work in certain industries, right? Anything from customer service to sales to the restaurant business, right? And there are people like this individual who do have a dirty mouth and they talk like that, which is fine amongst your friends. But my issue comes with sometimes you meet people like this. And remember, not everybody I'm going to, not everything I say is going to be going straight to these people. But I want to say this. If you're working a minimum wage job or when you're working at a service place, there is something that you need to do. You need to be your absolute best at this job because too many people get comfortable when they get at work, right? Some people don't understand what it feels like, especially younger people. They don't know what it feels like to be fired, right? I got fired in 2010. That was the last job I got fired from. And it impacted my entire life. I remember I was so bad at my job, right? Fat, obese. I used to weigh about 400 pounds. Out of shape, not, not moving well, right? And I remember losing this job because I was so slow. I had the mindset of I could just be whoever I want. I deserve this job. It's a privilege. And right, I remember my boss getting onto me so much, being like, why are you so slow? I remember they, one time I was making food and they kicked me off. They literally kicked me off the entire line and said, no, you got to go and wash dishes or something. I remember working at another job. I was so bad. And all I had to do is, you know, if you're a stalker, you have to go. I don't know what they call it anymore, but there was a time where you have to go and you used to have to go fix the shelves, right? Make everything look nice. I was so slow at that that they made me go, they told me, you know what, just get off, just get out the aisle, just go smash boxes. That's how bad I was, right? It was crazy because sometimes it was because uh, I just thought I was doing thing, everything wrong, so I tried to be too perfect. But within that, I became a terrible worker. I'm telling you guys, every job, every job I've had since then, I work my butt off. I get my very best because I know what it feels like to be fired. And I've never been fired again. All I'm saying is just when you get into these places and you want to be like, oh, you know, I, I want to be able to cuss and I want to be able to do that. Oh, no, you need to be the best employee you can freaking be. No matter where you work, because that kind of stuff trickles down into the rest of your life. I promise you. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> I got timestamps to where I want to talk about. 
breakfast. So when you ask what would be my dream, I don't have one. The only thing I can think of, I just want weekends off. I have worked weekends for over 30 years. I don't get holidays off. I don't get Mother's Day off. I work every, I think that would be the most important to me, is having my holidays and weekends off. We're gonna be moving over to Tanika in Chicago, Illinois. Sorry, Takeda. At Walgreens, I'm the senior beauty advisor. I love my job, but the pay is not good. And it was kind of bringing me down because I'm giving my job 110%. But at the same time, I have a family that I'm trying to support. Right now, we're living paycheck to paycheck. Like, my boyfriend at home, you know, we, we're a team. Hi, um, this is Amari and Demaya's mom. And I want to make sure that my kids are still there because I told them not to put them on the bus. I've been knowing this young lady all my life. We all grew up in the same church. Uh, I tried talking to her when I was a little younger. Um, she didn't give me a shot. <laughs> she said I was ugly. He, we was on the back porch and it was me and a couple of my god sisters and he was indirectly talking to me like, well, I've been trying to get this one girl's heart for all these years and she will not give me a chance. And I just started laughing and I'm thinking, he really has matured. And he Right, this part really ain't that important. I just kind of wanted to introduce you guys to him. I want to say this, guys. Here's something that I think um, that this documentary is trying to portray, but I think there's something that these young, these two individuals really miss, and I really want to go over that. Um, I want to make sure I got it at the right place, though, so give me just one second. Yep, yeah, right here. So what's going on here is because for you guys who don't understand, so he has a limited amount of time to get to the bus when he gets off. So if he doesn't run to the bus, he can't catch it. So that's why you see him running. He's finally able to call Takita, which he isn't allowed to do during his shift. It's not funny. Why are you still laughing that I'm running? I didn't. I was running. It's not funny. Hey, I'm like, hey I, at least I always catch it when I do run. <laughs> this is not funny. This is not a funny moment, me running for the bus. See, she laughing because she know what type of shoes I got on right now. She's like, you're not going to make that run. <laughs> it's all right. Today was another terrible day at Walgreens. Just did a clock hours and collect a check. That's all it was today at work. Just happy to get home and get to my little ones and they actually see me not in the morning and actually at nighttime, it's a, it's a good thing. Okay, so here's what I wanna talk about. And sorry if I don't uh, look at the comments, I just, <laughs> I gotta work my way through this. <clears throat> but I will read it after I finish. Let me say this, something that I think young people miss um, in their 20s and that this documentary was trying to push to be fair the documentary didn't say anything they, they allowed these people to talk pretty much so shout out to them shout out to uh endeavor as y'all can see in the bottom right hand corner in the video so and remember also i want to say that this documentary is from 2012 2013 so it's an older um documentary i want to say this though because to me, people say a lot has changed since then. I, I don't think so. It's about the same. People still look paycheck to paycheck. This this wouldn't look any different if I made a documentary today. It'd be the same. Um, probably be a little bit more people talking about non-binary stuff and stuff like that. But that'd probably be it. Um, I want to say this. When you're a young person, he said it's not funny to be ride, running after the bus. It kind of is, though. And this is what I'm saying. When people are in their 20s, and I was the exact same way, we think that's really the end of life. 
we think that in our 20s that's all life is right and if you and you're you're struggling to be a millionaire by 30 stupid as that sounds it's the truth if you talk to a lot of 20 year olds in uh, my generation right a lot of us were thinking millennials a lot of us were thinking that if we don't get to a million dollars by 30 we completely failed so when we're struggling in our 20s just trying to make ends meet we feel like complete failures instead of just getting through the process of being in your 20s because what people tend to complain about is how much they have to work they'll be like oh man i'm making this kind of money and i can barely see my kids and then they assume that back when people older than us were growing up that that was the case that they just worked at the little job at the uh whatever wherever they worked they worked at the little cashier job at the grocery store and they had a house and they were home to see their kids every night and life was just dandy it's not that's not true because if you go back and look at the history of how people used to work especially i'm just gonna have to say this but especially the men they were working probably upwards of 60 maybe even 80 hours a week that sounds insane though right but they were working, even though you could say you was working at a cashier. Not a lot of men were working as cashiers. OK, let's just go ahead and knock that out the way. Cashiers was not the number one job in America back then. So there was a lot of men who worked in the mines. And there was a lot of people. There was a lot of men who worked in the fields, in the oil fields. And they worked in factories and they didn't get to see their kids a lot. They were working, knocking out them 12 hours, just five days a week. Right. And they, they didn't get to see their kids. They were just putting food on the table. That was their job. So the concept today that people think that, oh, I work 40 hours, that's way more than they ever used to work back then. Also to say, oh, I work 40 hours, I need to only work 20. It's just like, I feel like there has to be some kind of common ground. Um, but just to go back to the 20s, being in your 20s, it's going to be a struggle. And that's okay. When people, that, this young man is 24. I mean, 23. The girl is 24 years old. They're acting as if being 23, 24 and struggling and having no skills working at Walgreens because they have no skills. They haven't got to do that. And because they struggle to kind of make ends meet, that it's the end of the world. They're acting as if Walgreens owes them 30 bucks an hour so where they can live comfortably. Right. And when I say comfortably, people that live today, they're not trying to live comfortably. They're trying to live beyond their means. Living comfortable to me sometimes is not necessarily paycheck to paycheck. It's just that you got enough money where if a crisis happened, you'd be OK. That's what it is. But people today, they get that kind of money. Let's say I gave somebody twenty thousand dollars right now. Do you think that money would be put in savings or anything or any investments? Nope. That money be slickety split gone. I could give somebody $100,000 right now. Do you think that money be put in savings and investments? Nope. Lickety split. It's gone. Because we haven't been taught how to spend money. So even if I gave these people six figures a year, both of these young people right now, six figures a year, do you think they still be broke? More than likely, yes. Because there's a lot of people who make six figures who are broke. And I don't mean broke as they don't make enough money. It's that when people make more money, they tend to up their means. They get a better car. They get a better house. They start going right back where they were, where 70% of their income is damn near just going to rent. Right? The more money people get these days, the more money they spend. And that's what I don't understand sometimes when they try to point people out who are not making enough money when they're 20s. It's like they could if they live even further below their means right but you can tell i'm not saying these two but i'm just saying that there are people who make enough money to get by but they decide to live in a wealthy county they decide to live in the wealthiest neighborhood or they try to live this life that they can't really afford and so they complain instead of living below their means and getting a rent that's bearable no they get a rent that's way too high and they can't make it and then they get a job they know can't afford it. And then they complain about that stuff. Not saying these two. I'm just showing you what I've noticed over the years. All right. We're going to move on to a couple. Jose, Marion, and Elizabeth. Let's get it. Let me get that set up. People in their four-wheelers out here, man. It's so annoying sometimes. But to each their own. To each their own. Inscription? It's about 20. 20 of them? Can you print out all these jobs? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Nice. Find them, make CDs.
A lot of paper. Should buy stock in this brand. I did two tours in Iraq when I came back. But I couldn't find a job anywhere. I was on government assistance. I was on food stamps. It feels very low. I finally found a job at a court reporting agency six months ago. The manager brought me in for an interview. She asked me what I thought I should get paid. I was like, um, sheesh, I don't know. I think I said like $13 an hour. She called me back. She said, after training, we'll pay you $17 an hour. And I was like, wow, that really kind of like got me by surprise. That's my highest paying job I've had. But the pay you get paid reflects the county. Thank you. Thank you. These two individuals, well, you haven't seen Elizabeth yet, but let's talk about Jose. Let's keep that up on the screen. Jose, and you'll learn, you won't see this, so I'll explain it now. Jose and his wife decides to work these jobs, right? His wife is doing fairly well. Um, they're still not making even close to enough. You're going to see her later. I won't explain her whole thing to spoil it. But let me just say, they're making this money, right? <clears throat> the problem with them is that they live in Montgomery, which is one of the wealthiest places you can live, right? The reason they won't move, and this part I probably won't show you. I'm not sure if I have it in the time set. But the reason they don't move out of this county is because of family. Listen to me when I say this. At some point, at some point, and I hate, I know people hate hearing me say this, but it's just the truth. And guess what? I did the same thing. If you do not make enough money to live in one of the wealthiest counties, you need to move because they have enough to move. The reason they don't is because there's family nearby. Here's the thing, buddy, and I'm sorry to tell you this. When you have your own family, sometimes it makes no sense to have everybody in your family struggling because you want to stay by family. I'll give you a case in point. I live in a pretty cheap neighborhood, me personally, because if I decided, me and my wife picked up right now and decided to go live in a bigger city, our rent would go up three times of what it is right now. Would there be more options? Would there be more stuff to do? And would we, could we be closer to our family? Of course we could. But we'd be flat broke. Me and my wife, before we made our move, we couldn't even afford hot water. Can you be, I'm not even going to sit here in front with y'all. Me and my wife took a shower every day in cold water. Right? And I know some people do take cold showers yeah, be, to be disciplined, blah, blah, blah. Not everybody wants to live that life, especially my wife. So we had to take cold showers every day. No gas, no nothing. Because it was so expensive for us to fix our water heater. It was so expensive for us to keep paying rent. It was so expensive for us to just live because it cost us so much gas to go back and forth to work. It cost us maybe, where we live now, it may cost me, I could... I could survive. My tank could survive about $20 a month. I could put $20 in my tank right now and survive the rest of the month. Back where we live, if I put $20 in my tank, it lasts me that day. It lasts me that day. I spend it about 50, 60 bucks every three days. You see what I'm saying? You see how much that adds up over time? So instead of them moving to a place that could help them, they, they go with this concept of, oh, I need to be about family. No, you don't. No, you don't. I understand how important family is to people. I get that. But maybe you, you have to bite the bullet. Now, I'll say this before I continue. The only reason Elizabeth is staying, which is her, the wife, Elizabeth is staying by the family because her mother needs help, right, to be taken care of because the father can't. Once again, what do you do? Does everybody just struggle the rest of y'all's days until your mother passes away? I understand how culture goes, okay? I get how culture goes. But even at some point, 
you have your own family to take care of. I don't know that if I would stay in a place and complain every single day about how I make so much less than the county will allow me to make to where I can't even sleep in a bedroom. Me, my son and my wife only have one bedroom and no other way to sleep. I'd move and I would, it would hurt me. But I, I would take my mom with me if I could. If we had no other choice, hey, mom, we got to move. It's either that or I can't even afford to take care. I can't afford to feed myself. How am I going to feed my mom too? How am I going to take care of my mom? And I'm struggling to keep the lights on at my little bitty room I got. It just doesn't make sense. Somewhere down the line, a sacrifice has to be made. And if you're going to make the sacrifice of staying broke, then you cannot also get on here and say, that, oh, well, there's not enough money to go around. You live in one of the wealthiest counties. What do you want? What do you want? Either you're going to sacrifice and be broke in a county and be broke for the next 20 plus years because you're going to have to stay there for your mother. Or you can move you and your mom out to some place where y'all can afford to where everybody can at least have a bedroom. You got to pick your heart at some point. And so I'm not, I would hate to say I, I, I hate being selfish to say, oh, man, I feel sorry for these people. But I don't. I don't. Not in this case. But let's continue. Because I know what it feels like to be broke, brother. Trust me on that one. <clears throat> I just get enough to get by in Montgomery County. Copyright the position strike. was... Hold on. No. What are you talking about? Copyright strike. I make videos. I do. I live stream Monday through Friday. And you saw I made. I, just, I put up videos yesterday. I put up videos seven days a week. For 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. I was like, those are some late hours. I'm not going to be there at night for Aiden. What's up, bud? Hi, Aiden. How was school? Oh, we got new words to practice. Elizabeth, she said, we'll make it work. OK, so Dad's going to put in the taquitos in the oven. What did you have for lunch today? All right, just wanted y'all to see the baby boy. So let's move forward a little bit. A little bit. We're going to move quite a bit forward. So just kind of where you see the family dynamics, right? Just once again, this is me explaining stuff through this video. So let's continue. Out of high school. School for me wasn't always my main priority. When I got with Elizabeth, she has her master's, and that really got me motivated to finish school. With his veteran benefits, Jose attends a community college, squeezing in study between work and childcare. Bread and butter? Yeah. Jose watches his sister's kids after school while their parents work. My next door neighbor works at the grocery store, and she's able to give us food that has to be off the shelf at an expiration date. It's not just a bakery. We'll get milk, organic milk. It got softer. Here you go, madame, your bread and butter. Can I dump this out? When's the expiration date? Five days ago. <laughs> but it still might be good, though, for a couple more days. It's been five days. I just had surgery earlier today. I'm still alive. And what happened last time? That was different. That's good milk. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I know that shortball. And the second thing I wanted to, I just wanted to show this part to show you guys how do they have so much dang food if they're so broke, right? So as you can see, their neighbor provides them with a ton of food, as you can see in the fridge and everything. Um, let me say this about, this is just a random fact. Uh, if you've ever worked at a grocery store, you know that the milk that is being expired on the shelf is not what is going to be expired at your house. That is when they have to have it off the shelf. Your milk can survive maybe a week or two past that, or any food that you're eating, right, can expire past that. It's just that they got they can no longer have it in the store just because you don't want to cause nobody's sickness. You're not going to sell milk to the very day it expires. You know what I mean? They try to get the stuff off the shelf as quickly as possible. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, this young man trying to figure it out, doing his little math homework. But y'all saw Elizabeth. Now, I'm going to explain this to keep y'all from having to watch it because it's pretty long. Elizabeth has a, master's, has a master's degree, right, in counseling. Still struggling. She's a high school counselor. She helps kids get through. Uh, she has $30,000 of debt, and she's trying to figure that all out. So they're trying to pay off the debt while also living in this itty-bitty place. 
they go to their mom's house and then they go to their, uh, his dad's house, I believe. Right. So they just switch between their parents' houses. And the reason Elizabeth says that she's struggling is because once again, I told you earlier that her mom needs to be taken care of. Okay. <sighs> That's pretty much it. So we'll continue on. <laughs> Let's continue on. I have another couple of times that's. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on to this place we didn't talk to earlier. We're going to take a step back to here. There are some countries where children get to go to school free, and it's covered through taxes. Not here. We make it so hard for them to go. And I don't think it's right. We want our children to be competitive. We want our children to go anywhere they want to accomplish anything that they want to do. But they can't get an education because we can't afford it. We can't afford it. How is it a country so rich as we supposedly are and children can't go to school? And then someone could possibly say, well, as parents, you're supposed to be able to help them. You're supposed to be able to, you know, have it in your plan. Really? I had him when I was 19 and I worked at Walgreens and all of that stuff. And, I got to take some college courses, but I didn't get to finish college. So, where's the money coming from? Listen here, the only way, and listen, I don't agree with the colleges necessarily, right? I understand there's some money hungry people out there, right? And so, as much as I would like to say, oh, I wish college was this or that, I'm not going to get too deep into that. Let's say this, though. And here's the hard thing, and this is coming from once again. I'm t this A lot of this documentary I can relate to because it's been my life. Um, I'm a man who went to college for six years, never graduated. Never graduated. All right? I've been blessed to be able to work the jobs that I have, and I thank my mother and my father for allowing me to be able to. Uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've always been very well spoken. I've always been a great worker, and that's what's made it for me. But to say there's not times in my life I went broke, but I was given the opportunity to go to college for free. And look at my dumb butt. Here I am. Okay. So let me say this. What I've seen, as far as people who didn't have the same blessings I had, it could go to and had to work to go to college, right? The only way that'll work now, and I know this way sucks, but you may have to go to school for eight years to get a four-year degree. Because you can only go part time. You may have to take two courses at a time. If it's that important to you, then that's what you do. Right now, to be fair, this young man who y'all saw before, the only reason he's not in college is because he went to school. And he had a scholarship and he got injured and they took a scholarship. So he dropped out and he now owes money because if you withdraw. For you guys who have probably not been to college, if, or if you have, I'll just explain this. If you go to college and take out a loan or you get scholarships or anything like that, right? So if you take out, a, so you can get scholarships to help you. But a lot of people take out the extra loans to, in, to be able to help pay their bills or to, to do whatever they want with it, right? If you take out that loan or you take out any of that kind of stuff, normally you don't have to pay it back until later. However, if you get enrolled in classes, and you drop your class and you withdraw after a certain date, right? Or you just drop the classes towards the end of the year, you have to pay the school back that money before you can go back to school. And so this young man did that. He get when he got hurt, he dropped out after the drop date. Once you once once you pass the deadline, you're gonna owe that money back to the school. Those loans you took out, you gotta owe those back immediately back to the school. Not maybe subsidizing and all that, but I'm talking about the school, the school tuition. You're gonna owe that back, right? And they're gonna make you pay that because you withdrew from the courses, however, you didn't finish. 
which you could normally pay later, like I said. So he's not in school because he owes money to the schools, right? He can't transfer his transcript. You cannot do an official transcript. You cannot get that from a school unless you pay off all the uh, everything you owe to that school. So, so that's why he's not going to school, and that's why he's not doing these things. Now to go back to what the mom was saying, how do you pay for it? The hard way. The hard way. You work. You take one. You take one class at a time. He, if he went to a community college, maybe five hundred dollars a course. If he, obviously, if he tried to go to a private college, it'd be insane. There'd be no way. But five hundred dollars a course, you know, get a trade. I don't. Even, to be fair, I don't know what he's going to school for. Maybe they'll explain that in the other ne- the next four documentaries. But at that point in time, this is just me in person. If I could go over and do it all over again, I would just do trade, man. I'm being honest with you. I would have just did trade. I would have just became a plumber, did HVAC. I would have just did something like that. Because what we end up doing is going to school to be a radio host. We go to school to be a journalist. We go to school to do psychology. A lot of these jobs don't pay well enough. So you, if you don't finish, you gain zero skills, right? If you Let's say you're one semester away from finishing your psychology degree. You have learned really nothing that can even transfer. However, if you go to the two-year trade school, when you get out of that two-year trade school, you'll have skills that you can use immediately. When you come out of school with a four-year degree in psychology, there's really nowhere you can go with that. There's really nothing you can do. A four-year degree in criminal justice, there's not a... F- <laughs> there's not a lot of things you can do. I was about to say fluffing, but I know that sounds weird on here. Uh, there's not a whole lot you can do. So I'm just saying... That's how you do it. Having that that piece of paper does not mean a whole lot unless you get a degree in something like STEM, engineering, some kind of science, sometimes math. I don't see math go very far unless you're going to be a professor. Um, I've not seen a lot of people who has a mathematics degree do anything with it. In fact, I had a friend who had a degree in biology and he works for the mail service because it doesn't go anywhere. So you just got to be smart if you're going to do it. But if you if you're going to have to work like these people do one course at a time, what else can you do? What else can you do? Either you're going to complain about not having the skills and complain about the government or you're going to have to make it happen. These things may change in the next 50, 60 years. But right now we are where we are. Sometimes you got to learn how to play the game, baby. And I'm not knocking these people. I'm just saying that's just how I feel. All right. One more part I want to go over here. I want to talk about um, Amelia one more time. Because pretty much we went over everybody else. But I want to talk about Amelia. She's going to talk about her job when she was in construction. Let's start. I love my little house. I wish I was here. I bought this house in 2002 when I was in construction. Bought my motorcycle when I was in construction. Bought my car when I was in construction. Yeah, I couldn't have done this with, uh, it's 750 square feet. It's a duplex. Somebody else owns the other side. They used to call it the little doll house. It was always clean. I had nice things. And then when you lose a job making $80,000 a year, um, you know, your options are either to keep it and struggle or let it go, and I chose to rent it. She was just out of her apprenticeship when I met her, and I was fascinated that she was, you know, doing this job because I didn't know too many. I mean, I watched Flashdance back in the 80s, but I didn't know too many women who got into the trades and succeeded and were accepted and could be part of it all. I was bartending, and one day somebody said, why don't you apply in the trades? I'm like, the trades? They're like, yeah, you know, carpenter, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, okay. So I went to all the trades. I went to the electricians, the pipe fitters, sprinkler fitters. I remember when she got into the union, they gave you a booklet to study over for the test, and she must have studied that thing. Now, I want to say this, guys. This next part is going to be really confusing really confusing i'll have to explain it because i had to watch it a few times myself but they're going to talk about um 
why she's no longer in construction. And it's not going to make a whole lot of sense unless you understand, um, um, unless you watch this documentary a couple of times, because they don't do a very good job explaining it. So if you're confused, don't worry. I got y'all. Thing for months. I passed the test and I started May 8th of 2000 for the sprinkler fitters. I thought I'd died and went to heaven. I'd never made that kind of money in my life. I'd never had insurance. I, I couldn't make the doctor's appointments fast enough. I was like, oh my God, I have insurance, oh my God. I remember her working on the scissors lifts, you know, to be attaching all the screws and the fittings and the hangers to put the sprinkler heads. Women in the trades generally don't make it very far. And if you do, it's because you have tough skin. You have to be, I mean, because a lot of those guys will razz you, they, you know what I mean? They don't feel women should be doing their job. It was fun, I had a lot of fun. It was a busy time, we worked consistently. And then in 2008, it dropped, everything fell. And I got laid off in December of 2008. When they started hiring back, they just didn't call her back for whatever reason. A younger, stronger man could do probably more than, you know, a 50-year-old woman is probably what a lot of them think. But it's tough. It's tough to go back. I thought for sure that I'd be able to retire. Okay, so let me explain that part. Hold on, just give me two minutes. Not two minutes, give me uh, 20 seconds. Okay. Okay. So like I was saying, <clears throat> This part's kind of confusing. What ended up happening is she got she got taken away. Her, she lost her job when she was in her 30s. For some reason, that lady says that she lost her job at 50. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense because when she was doing this job, she was in her 30s. So it makes no sense for them to say that she lost her job at 50 because she said nobody wants somebody who's 50 years old. This documentary is happening while she's 50. So that makes no sense when she lost her job a few years prior to this documentary. All right. Um, so she's, no, she wasn't in her 30s. She was, let's see, this documentary made in 2012. So she was roughly 44. So that confused me because she's 50 now. So I was like, wait, is she 50? So that part didn't make a whole lot of sense. So mainly what I want to say to that is, yeah, of course, if they were going to pick younger people, of course they're going to pick younger people to do this because it makes sense for the younger people to do it. They're not going to hire somebody who's 44 who may struggle to continue to do the work. And so I'm not against that happening. Now, because she had gone back into some deeper construction, I don't know. Don't know that whole story. We'll find that later out in time. Later in time. So all I want to say is, man, when it comes to this living hard and these hard wages, you have to understand that it takes a lot of time to, it takes, listen, it's going to take a lot of skill and it's going to take a lot of work to be able to survive in this world when you don't have the skills, right? And so I understand these people are starting to say that this, there's no, it's not fair that we're living this way, but we all make choices, right? The people who are working at Walgreens, they can make it work for now, until so they could do something later, but there's going to be a struggle. But just because you're struggling doesn't mean you're failing. And I think that's what we see a lot now. The woman who's 50, she's pretty much not a whole lot more she can do at this point. But the, the people who are younger, it doesn't mean you're a failure if you're 27 years old and you're still struggling. It doesn't mean life is over. Is it going to be a hard time? Is it going to be a hard time where you may not have a whole lot of food in the fridge? There may be some times where you're not being able to scrape by. There's a lot of times where you don't have rent going on for you. That happens. But 
you'll get through it if you keep pushing forward and keep learning, keep getting skills. They're making the right strides. But sometimes fighting for a higher wage or stuff like that without having the skills is tough. I'm not saying don't fight for it, but while you're in the midst of it, take this time to learn these skills. Take this time to continue to get better, continue to keep doing well in this life. Right. Because you're going to struggle in your 20s. That's just how it goes because you don't have a lot of skills. Even if you went to college, a lot of people in their 20s still don't have a lot a lot of money. I know plenty of people who have degrees who are still working in call centers with me who does not have a degree. You just got to keep pushing forward when it comes to these things. It is hard. It is tough. Just keep moving forward, guys. Uh, we're going to talk more about this documentary as time comes along. I think it's a great documentary to keep showing how hard it is to live on minimum wage. But the only way um, I just want to say this, though, don't get too down on yourself if you're struggling right now, especially in your 20s or even in your early 30s. You got to start picking it up after that. But at the same time, just know that it is going to be a struggle. It's going to be hard. It doesn't make you a failure and it doesn't mean you should give up or you should also say I want to say this. You cannot also just sit there and continue to complain. What you have to do is keep pushing, keep looking for jobs that can gain you some skills, even if that means being an apprentice plumber. And sometimes that means you got to go work, um, be a mechanic, or just help change the tires. You can learn stuff from people who already have the skills and move forward. But the chances of you doing anything at a Walgreens and then you would have complained and say, we need more money. The only thing that's going to come with that more than likely is you're going to make more money and spend more money. That's what normally happens. The more money, be, the more money people make, the more money they spend, right? Until they realize they don't need all the stuff that they think they need. I would just say, if I was them working at Walgreens, I would just do my best to move up. And if they say I can't ever move up, I would go get another job that I can move up. It's my, and I would take lower wage as long as I know I could probably move up in the next couple of years. But that's just how it goes. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this thing, man. I think it's a very good documentary um, to go over when it comes to working hard and living these wages. So I appreciate y'all.